Hey friends, Tom here. Today we're going to talk about 18 tricks using the Tidyverse in R. The Tidyverse packages are a set of packages that let you work efficiently with data. And in this video, I'm going to share 18 tricks that I use often when I'm working with data in R. I've put the links in the description below so you can jump around if you know a particular trick or you can jump to the ones you find most interesting. And by the end, you'll have some new ideas to take into your own work with data. If you enjoy this video, please support me by liking it and also subscribe because I regularly upload new videos. Okay, so let's get started. First, we're going to load a few packages. We're going to load the Tidyverse packages and also the Lubriday package to work with dates. And we're going to load the New York City 2013 data, which is basically a set of uh, data that we're going to use for examples. And if you don't have it installed, you can run this command. I'll show you what that data looks like. Basically, it's just a row per flight. Okay, so the first tip is how to create new columns in a count or a group by. So uh, commonly, if people wanted to figure out, okay, how, how many of our flights are uh, long versus short, and we're gonna define a long flight as over six hours long. They would first create a new column using mutate which looks like this, so basically it'll be, it'll be false if the flight is less than six hours long and true if the flight is longer than six hours, and then run an additional count statement to get the counts. But we can simplify that by just including our statement in the count, basically. So we can just run that command, and it will create a new column called long flight, and then it will also generate the counts. Uh, we can do it similarly for the origin to destination, we can create a new string called flight path. Uh, we can also do this in a group by statement. So we can actually use the make date function from Lubridate, create a new column called date, and then generate some metrics for each date. So the number of flights and the medium air time of flights on that day. That's the first tip. The second tip is how to sample and randomly shuffle data. Now you can use slice sample to do this. So if you run slice sample, it'll select uh, in this case, 10 rows randomly, or you can do it by proportion using the prop argument. So this will select 1% of the data from the flight's data set. You can even like basically shuffle your entire data set using proportion equals one, which is basically 100%. So it will shuffle every row and it will give you a data set that's shuffled randomly uh, with the entire thing has been shuffled. And you can even generate uh, a sample of so let's say three rows based on a group. So here we can generate three random flights based on the origin. So there's three airports in this data and this will generate three random rows for each origin. Okay, tip number three, create a date column. So we can use the make date function from Lubridate to create a new date column. So this, this will generate basically year, month and day and we can create a new column using mutate and the make date function to turn that into a date column. Tip number four, have you ever had data where you've basically gotten data that looks like, like this, where you have like string, basically other string characters, non-numerical values and so on? Well, I'm gonna show you how to simply get the numbers out of that data without going through a whole bunch of complicated regular expressions and so on. There's a function called pass number. So if we look at this data, we can use the pass number function to extract out the numerical component of whatever's in that. So uh, basically uh, it will very cleanly extract whatever the number part of that column happens to be. So that's the pass number function. Tip number five. There are some clever ways to select columns in your data. So let's suppose you want to select every column that starts with DEP for departure. You can use the starts with function and it will select all of the columns that start with departure. Or if you wanted to keep all the other columns but put the departure columns at the start, you can use everything to include everything that's been left over. And uh, that will select the, dependence, uh, the departure columns and then put everything else, every other column after that. You can also use ends with, which is kind of like starts with, but it just does the opposite. So basically we're hours at the end. And you can use contains to search for dependency anywhere in the column name. So this will select all of the columns which contain the letters DEP. Okay, tip number six. 
You can use case when to create a column that will specify a particular set of values when a condition is met. So if you look at, let's look at our original data. So if we just select the origin, we can see that it's all abbreviated, the, uh, the airport names. Well, if we want to convert those to a, like a full name, we can use the case when function. Basically the case when function takes a condition, which in this case is origin equals EWR, and it says when origin has that value, then we'll use this value instead. So if we run that command, you'll see that it generate. Uh, oh, whoops, I'm gonna put a count afterwards. You'll see that it's converted all of these abbreviated names to the full name. And you can put more complicated names in here as well. So you could have, um, let's say you could have another condition which is uh, like, so and the uh, delay, departure delay is greater than 20 minutes. Let's run that command. Um, here we go, delayed. And we could have another condition. So is less than or equal to 20. For example, and then we run that. And now we basically can have these two split out. So basically case when lets you build some nice complicated conditional queries to do replacements. Tip seven. You can use string replace all to find and replace multiple options at once. So again, we can replicate the same thing we did above by matching a list, which we put inside a vector where we have the, the string we're going to replace. So this caret just means the start of the string. This means the end of the string. And we're saying, wherever this string is matched inside origin, replace it with this value. And if we run that, and again, we'll put a count afterwards just to just so we can see what we've done. Um, um, again, it's done all of the replacements like so. So that's string replace all. Tip number eight, you can use transmute to create or change columns and, and only retain those columns. So if we used mutate instead, so if we just did mutate, it would create a new date column at the end, but it would keep all of the other columns. Well, if we use transmute, it will only keep the columns that we specify inside the transmute. So here it's only kept the date, which are created using make date and the tail number. So transmute is useful if you want to drop columns that you, that, uh, you don't want to keep in a mutate. Tip number nine, you can use pipes, which are these, uh, carrot, these uh, this, this symbol here, everywhere, including inside mutates, if you've loaded the tidyverse. So, uh, this is a pretty complicated string where I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm changing the name. I'm saying, take the name column, convert it to uppercase, replace any ink or co uh, with an empty string, replace airlines or ways or corporation with an empty string, convert it to title case, and then convert US, like when US has a lowercase s, to fully uppercase. And if we, if we run that, again, we'll just, we'll just count name. Um, basically, it's, it's taken the abbreviated, the abbreviated, uh, like the, the full name. So if we look at our full name, uh, it's taken this original column and converted it to only retain the the short name of the airline. Now, if we were to split this up, if we if we weren't to put this into pipe, we'd have to write a command that looked like this, where we're putting every function inside of every other function. And it would be incredibly complicated to read and unclear what's going on. So you can use the pipe even inside a mutate and it, it can really simplify sometimes your operations. Okay, tip number 10. You can filter groups without making a new column. So let's have a look at our flights. We'll look at the top carriers. Okay, so these are our, our carriers. We're gonna select, we're gonna select every column, every row from flights, which has over uh, 10,000 flights leaving with that carrier. So to do that, we can create a new column, a new, a new variable which has flights, we group by the carrier, and then we run this filter inside of that group. And if we run that command, now we have a new data frame which has all of the flights data, but only for carriers with over 10,000 flights. So you can use uh, filters which use this 
um, in, which gets the number of rows inside a group without creating a new column. Okay, tip number 11. I love this one. Uh, it's extract, the extract function. You can split a string into columns based on a regular expression. So let's look again just at our name, our name value. So if we just count name, um, we'll see that we have uh, a pretty long set of names. Um, now, if we wanted just to take the short name, if we wanted to split this up, we can use the extract function. If we run this command, it will then take our data and it will then keep the short name and the remainder based on the regular expression that we specify here. So this uh, regular expression, this matches the start of the string, then you specify a group inside parentheses, and this is basically any non-spaced character, at least one non-spaced character, up to the first space, and then all of the rest of it goes into remainder. So the extract function is really useful. And if we wanted to keep the original name, we can use remove equals false and run that command, and then it will actually keep the original name as well. So the extract function is really useful if you want to, to take a complicated string column and then split it into separate parts. Tip number 12. So we can use semi-join to pick only rows from the first table which are matched in the second table. So one thing we could do, let's take a, let's take a list of airlines. So we're going to use the airlines data which is included. We're going to pick every airline which has a name that starts with A. So we're going to create, put this into a variable called airways beginning with A and this looks like, like this. There's only three carriers that fit into that category. So now we can use semi-join on this data frame to pick only flights, like only the flights in here and the flights variable, which have a match inside the airways beginning with A table. And we're going to match on carrier. So if we run that, uh, it'll select basically only those flights which have a carrier that's matched inside airways beginning with A. So if we do a count, we'll count on the name, uh, oops, count on the carrier. Um, basically, this will uh, be only those flights which have the carrier starting with the letter A. Okay, now anti-join basically does the opposite of semi-join. So anti-join picks every row from the first table which is not matched in the second table. So to do the opposite, we can basically use anti-join. We'll run that and we get all of the other flights with carriers whose name does not start with A. So that's the anti-join function. I use semi-join and anti-join very frequently in my work with data. And uh, if you don't use them, highly encourage you to check them out. Tip number 14. So you can use factor reorder to sort bar charts. Now to show you why this is important, let's, let's go back to our data and we'll look at, we'll create a flights with airline names. We're going to uh, just generate a basic bar plot which has a count of the number of flights with that carrier. So if we uh, zoom in on this plot, you can see that we have a pretty disorganized bar plot with um, basically the number of flights um, here and then the name of the airline along the bottom. And this is kind of just a bit disorganized because um, we have like airlines with very few flights and we also have airlines with massive flights. We would like to sort these. So to do that, we can use factor reorder. Basically for factor reorder, you specify the, the variable that you want to sort and you specify the column that you want to sort it by. So if we just run the first part, we basically, we, our counts look like this. We have like a, the name of the airline and we have the number of flights with that airline. Basically what we can do is we can then uh, use factor reorder to turn that into a factor variable which is sorted by n. And then if we do generate our plot once more, now they're actually sorted from the, uh, the, the, the airlines with the fewest flights to the airlines with the most flights. Okay, tip number 15, we can use Coward Flip to display these counts better. So at the moment, this is really crowded. What we can do though, is we can just add Coward Flip to the end and run that and it will put, it will put the y-axis where the x-axis once was and the x-axis where the y-axis once was. And so now we can see our counts much more clearly and we can see the actual airline name. Tip number 16, you can use factor lump to lump some factor levels into an other category. So let's suppose we, we wanted to generate our counts once more but only include the top five carriers and then lump every other carrier into the other category. Well to do that we can just use factor lump and specify the number that we want to um, have to retain 
and then after that it will convert everything into other. So if we run this, we'll see now that it, it basically retains the, the, uh, the top carriers, the top five, but then it drops uh, the ones that, um, uh, wait a sec actually, we should, instead of carrier, we should use name there, name to keep the names. There we go, yeah, so that's clever. Now we have the carrier names and then all of the other carriers are in this other category. So that's factor lump. Tip number 17. Sometimes you want to generate all of the combinations of a set of vectors using, and you can do that using crossing. So here, if we run this command, the crossing command, it will actually generate a list of all of the combinations of these vectors. So online and physical store, new repeat, spend range, and so on. And it generates every combination of those. And that can be really helpful if you want to, for example, run a join onto those and have all of them retained. So that's the crossing function. Okay, tip number 18. Uh, this is the final tip. Sometimes you want to create functions that can actually take column names into it. So let's, let's just show you the kind of motivation for this. So let's, we want to have our flights with airline names. Um, what if we want to have a function that takes a set of, uh, a set of column names and then generates some summary metrics for each of the column names that we specify. So in this case, we're gonna specify air time and arrival delay, and we're gonna calculate the minimum, the maximum, the median, and the mean. So I'll show you what the output will, will look like. Whoops, we need to actually create our function first. The output will look like this, where basically we have uh, each of the columns, then min, max, median, mean, and then the next column, arrival delay, min, max, median, mean, and so on. And this is a really useful thing because we can actually do a group by and we can actually uh, generate for each group a summary metric. So how do we create this sort of function? Well, we can do it using the, the double braces approach in the tidyverse and also using the across function, which is in the new version of dplyr. And uh, basically what this does is it across every one of these column names that we specify, um, uh, it will basically run these functions and then we specify using the dot names, we specify the column names we want it to output to. In this case, the, um, the column names, so air time and uh, the uh, arrival delay, and then the function, uh, which is min, max, median, and so on. And basically what this does is it takes in any number of column names and summarizes these metrics for those column names. So this is a really useful way if you want to create your own function to summarize data, and you can run it uh, not just by itself, but you can even run a group by, and then you can summarize across that group. Really helpful if you want to get things broken out and have one function to rule them all. Okay, I hope those have been helpful for you. Thank you, and have an awesome day.